I'm so happy to uh, be interviewing you today. It's my honor. I am so How's happy it? to be here. I'm excited about RadFest this year. Yeah, well, we're excited to have you there. I know you've got some uh, great new things happening that we're all excited to hear about. We're going to give a little glimpse of that today in this interview. And uh, of course, Liz Parrish is uh, CEO of the Great Science uh, uh, clinic of BioViva, and they're doing such fantastic work in, work in gene therapies, amongst many other things. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, uh, Liz, about what BioViva's uh, main initiatives are now? Yeah, so, you know, we're trying to tackle the biggest uh, medical uh, disaster, <laughs> which is aging associated non communicable diseases. And so we're building gene therapies that will help people live longer and healthier. And so that's been our mission since 2015. And so now we're seven years in and uh, we're building IP and building studies and gathering human data. And so it's, it's getting a lot more exciting now. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been reading a lot about what you're doing and uh, hearing a lot about it. There's a lot of buzz going around. And you're one of the, if not the leader in gene therapy work that's being done right now in the world. And uh, what, what would you say uh, are some of the prospects uh, for the future, say in the next five years for gene therapy? Well, in the next five years, you're going to start to see more and more studies uh, open up around the, the gene therapy space uh, to treat aging. So for instance, the uh, UCSD uh, in the United States uh, College in San Diego is starting the first gene therapy in the United States, FDA sanctioned, for dementia. Uh -huh. uh, of course, right. we, we started a, a gene therapy that was done via medical tourism uh, about two years ago, uh, treating patients with dementia with gene therapy. And based on the results of that data, uh, we're actually going to move forward to a larger study. Well, as, yeah, again, very, very exciting work. And uh, what, what, what is the main, uh, you think, difference that gene therapy can make uh, for people? The reason that you would want to use gene therapy to target aging is because you want to actually target where aging starts. And that's at the cellular level. Uh, that's at gene expression. So we want to make your cells more youthful genetically, you know, so that you're not dependent on things like open heart surgeries or, you know, taking a pill every day. If we can solve it genetically, you know, you'll be able to set it and forget it for uh, the long run. Wow, that, that's definitely, that's definitely exciting. So now you're focusing right now, I understand, uh, for the most part on dementia, when you're, you know, solving the dementia issues and the Alzheimer's, is this something that completely uh, works in the overall effect on the body? Is it kind of a cascading effect or what? Yeah, so, so the, the company is interested in all, obviously all cause mortality. So we're interested in treating all of the, the diseases of aging, but the gene sets that we chose, uh, the reason that we would choose something like Alzheimer's and de around dementia space is because it's a, a well-known brutal disease. It's, it's a disease in which you know, there's a mandate in order to get uh, new technology to patients. But the same technology that we would treat to to use to treat something like Alzheimer's, we could also use to treat something like heart disease, uh, hopefully things uh, in the cancer space in the future, um, you know, kidney failure. So we're working with regenerative gene therapies in which should have an application in all cause mortality. But the great thing when you're doing something like looking directly at dementia, you can use a lower dose of the gene therapy, therefore making gene therapy more affordable uh, helping people who are have a terminal disease uh, who need access to technology now in a more affordable way, and then you know get the data in which you need to better understand how to tackle a whole body system. Well, that's a key phrase you just used, a more affordable way, because I know a lot of people are concerned about that. You know, they think of gene therapies, they think are extremely expensive, mm -hmm. and of course, yeah. already, from what I understand, I mean, you've helped drive down the, some of the cost already. So what we're doing right now is we work with companies that do medical tourism. So my company is not able to treat people, but uh, by consent, people can get access to technology through medical tourism. And already the price to uh, participate in medical tourism is a lot less than if these drugs were regulated drugs in the United States. 
So right now, the cheapest gene therapy in the United States is uh, $425,000 to treat one eye, uh, whereas for a fraction of that cost, a person could treat dementia uh, offshore of the United States. Now, you know, of course, you know, people have to be educated uh, going offshore for, for therapeutics. You know, they, they need to fully understand the technology. They need to work with their medical doctor and the treating physician uh, to fully understand outcomes and the risks. But um, in all of the data that we have assessed so far, there has not been any negative outcomes. And so uh, that's, that's really fantastic. Uh, not all patients actually um, have uh, a, a positive outcome from a therapy. Uh, some patients may not actually benefit from a therapy. That's another caveat in which we see in all of medicine. Uh, but in the areas where we do see improvements, um, it, you know, it's, it's been staggeringly positive. And so that's why now our company, BioViva, wants to do an IRB sanctioned uh, study in Mexico City with 15 to 20 patients. And, and that's something that we're raising money for now. And you need about, I think it's, I think it's 2 million at least for that. Is that correct? Yeah, we want to raise about $2 million. And so uh -huh. you can see the real benefit of, you know, working out offshore the United States in order to do trials and studies that are less expensive than they would be in the United States. In parallel with that, um, my thesis for my master's was based around the regulatory system and what we could better do uh, with the system that we work in now, which is the US FDA, in order to get patients quicker access to therapeutics. And you'll see I'm going to be releasing a paper uh, very soon, uh, and which has a co-author co that you know of, <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, we're hoping to get some some real uh, leverage there and start to initiate the U.S. government into making changes so that the the ease of use uh, and the less expensive access that people get outside the United States could be um, disseminated right here in the United States, that patients wouldn't have to leave their own country in order to participate in these therapies that yeah. could then uh, expedite the use of these technologies to humans. Well, that would be excellent. But Right now, also, this uh, tourism, you know, uh, opportunity is a great uh, chance for a lot of people, right, who have you know, dementia or, or early Alzheimer's to get a treatment that is reasonable. And, and I mean, two million, you could treat 10 to 15 people. That's pretty, that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it is really fantastic. And, um, you know, we definitely uh, promote, uh, especially integrated health systems, because they allow us to actually look at the data. So whether you want to be part of a study, uh, like something that BioViva is doing, in which would have, you know, an ethics board review process, or you want to just uh, participate in your own uh, therapeutic experience, we definitely suggest that you, if you're going offshore, uh, that you make sure that you have a representative uh, that's assessing that data so that something comes uh, of your experimental use of a, of a, of a new technology. Yeah. So uh, I did, now what's so great too is that you're already, like you said, treating people and having success. Can you talk about a little bit more about that success with these people? Yeah, so I have to be really clear about that. So that's Integrative Health Systems. It's a different wow. company than BioViva. Uh, so we assess the data and we have seen success in their dementia study in which they treated five patients. Everything was paid for. So these patients got access to free technology and um, it, four out of the five uh, actually had a, a decent benefit from the therapy. It's not a cure for um, dementia, but there were improved cognitive scores and increased telomere length, which we didn't expect to see. But those improved cognitive scores, you don't see that um, in uh, dementia. You see a decline. Uh, the best thing on the market ever before could actually slower uh, uh, sorry, slow uh, the uh, reduction in the uh, MMSE scores, but this therapy actually increased them and, and that's significant. And now we want to see how long that lasts. Does that last a year? Does that last two years? Will these people need retreatment? Um, you know, so we're designing our protocols around that. Now with the study in Mexico City that we want to do, we would be increasing the dose of the gene therapy because we think that that's going to be critical to even having a better outcome. Wow, beautiful. So it's an opportunity for somebody who might be listening to this uh, interview to get involved uh, if they have an issue or know somebody has an issue with dementia to get involved and, and, and possibly get some great results 
at a reasonable cost comparatively now what you can get in the United States. You know, Absolutely. So, and, and, and contribute to this study. So even if you know somebody as you're listening to this video that has this problem or you want to, you know, donate some money to this program with Liz and this, the company they're working with, uh, you know, this 2 million is all they need to get this study and treat 10 or 15 people. This could be a great advancement for uh, everyone, you know, really who has this issue, which is uh, epidemic throughout the world. Yeah. And, it, and if you put it into perspective, if this was a U.S. Uh, FDA regulated drug right now, if this was an approved therapy for dementia, it would be at minimum $2 million for one treatment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, it is really quite amazing. And, you know, as we know, the biggest companies in the world do their studies offshore. Um, all of the big drug companies do that because it, it, it costs less to do that. I don't think that that should be the case. And I'd really like to bring innovations back to the United States. Well, your idea, and I think it's great, is to get do this offshore now and then bring the data back to get the efficacy to get to, to get the approval correct and then be able to do it here yeah exactly yeah so that that's what this study yeah. would be about so, is to do uh you know a, a study or a clinical trial at the level that the us fda would recognize the data uh as such to be applied towards a, a fast uh regenerative medicine remat sort of uh platform in which we could more quickly move it through the um the fda regulate regulatory system wow. Well, I'm, I'm really, uh, yeah, very, very excited and very impressed by this work, Liz, and everybody is who's, uh, you know, hearing about this. And I hope uh, everybody who's listening here can get a feel for what you're doing. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's, to say the least, it's magnificent. And uh, I get goosebumps as I talk about it because it's uh, all part of creating a new world and we're so grateful for what you're doing. Is there anything else you want to add to what uh, maybe I didn't ask you or you got on your mind right now that you'd like to uh uh, you know, really expressed about in this uh, interview? No, I'm just really looking forward to um, speaking at RADFAST and I'm looking forward to doing this, this larger cohort study for dementia. Well, thank you again for the great work you're doing. It's, uh, like I say, it's phenomenal and uh, you're moving so fast too. So I'm excited. Well, I've got a little over five and a half months to RADFAST. So I'm excited to hear you at RADFAST because you always bring something new and fresh, you know, and uh, you're, you're one of the leaders in this, if not the leader in this field. So again, we're really appreciative. Yeah, you have no idea. And I don't even know yet what we'll talk about there, but I'm guessing it'll be pretty cool. <laughs> I know, it's, uh, it, it'll be something uh, even greater than what we're talking about today. And this is pretty darn great. <laughs> so so thanks again, we appreciate it. And we'll see you at RadFest. Okay, thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Okay,